broadcasting live from the Design Studio in London for the final time today, the final installment of Rado Design Week. Um, we've seen three new watches being unveiled live on the Design's um, site. And today we're gonna unveil the final contribution to Rado Design Week. Um, joining us from Switzerland again, we have Adrian Bushard, CEO of Rado and Hakim El Kadiri, who's the Vice President of Product Development at Rado. Hi guys. Hi. Hello, Marcus. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you doing? You said you shared some beautiful pictures of the office building in snow yesterday. Do you still have snow in Switzerland? All for the, you know, uh, probably in the mountains, but uh, on the level which uh, we are working on for the, you know, uh, but it's a little bit early in December, actually. Yeah. And in London, it's raining very heavily. You might even be able to hear the water dripping down the, the side of the building behind me. Um, but also we're joined from New Delhi today by Samir Tagra and Jitan Tukral of Tukral and Tagra, who's a, which were a design and um, art studio in New Delhi. Hi guys. Hello, Marcus, how are you doing today? Nice to meet you. So Samir, tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do and who you are. Uh, well, both of us uh, went in school and then uh, we have almost 20 years of practice in uh, oscillating between social design, uh, design solutions, and uh, studio practice, which is fine arts. And uh, it's interesting to kind of work in, in, a, in a team because both of us uh, can have mood swings and one can carry it on. Uh, it's interesting to kind of uh, work this kind of uh, process-oriented projects, more in-depth research and then moving into the visual language. So, yeah. So they've had snow in Switzerland. It's raining here in London. What's the weather like in New Delhi right now? It's cold and pollution in New Delhi. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so anyway, so we've had a great journey so far with Rado Design. We, we've been to Tokyo, we've been to Amsterdam, we've been to London, and now we're hooking up with New Delhi. But Adrian and, um, and Hakim, Tell us a little bit about Rado. Tell us a little bit about the Rado Design Week and tell us a little bit about these four collaborations that we've launched this week as part of Rado Design Week. Of course, it's a great pleasure to enter into the fourth round uh, of this uh, Design Week. Uh, I had personally the opportunity to, to let know uh, a lot of interesting uh, people from different countries. Uh, with which we are collaborating already uh, several years, very creative persons. And of course, I know uh, Hakim with his team, also they are very creative, of course, uh, watch creative oriented persons. And this merge between, you know, uh, designers of other branches and also our internal people, this make a very good mix in order uh, to, to create beauties who are very exciting and which are, uh, uh, creating uh, joy uh, all over the world. Okay, and you're going to share your presentation to tell us a little bit more about the brand and the, the Rado Design Week collaborations. Mm. Rado is a legendary Swiss watch brand which uh, has roots back to 1917. That would mean over 100 years ago, our brand was founded exactly here on this place where both of us, we are sitting uh, now. And uh, finally, we have two main reasons why uh, the Rado brand uh, become, became so popular and is so, so strong actually worldwide. The one reason is we are known as master of materials. During many, many years, our engineers, our watchmakers, they have acquired a competence to work with specific materials like hard metal, like high-tech ceramic, like ceramos, to protect the beauty of our movements in a way that you have a wearer feeling which is unbelievable. You know, the, the, uh, uh, the ceramic is scratch proof. The ceramic is very, uh, uh, very nice to wear. It's very light. Uh, it's really a, a great comfort for the wearer. And uh, this is definitely one of uh, our big strengths. The second strength which we have by Rado, when you are wearing a Rado, when you see here, immediately you really recognize uh, the product because we are working with unique designs. We have uh, definitely very unique designs, also very pioneering designs. Uh, first of all, because we don't want to be like everybody else and this 
two strengths makes that finally we are strong and recognized on a worldwide scale. Here, the photo which you have already mentioned, Marcus, uh, two days ago when I arrived here at six o'clock in the morning to Lengnau, I, I was in the field and I took this photo. You see a little bit snow, the Rado factory, uh, and uh, a little bit later, all the 250 employees uh, arrived. They have started to produce uh, watches, uh, to make custom service, you know, to make marketing, and finally to, to, to create our beauties in order to be well prepared to enjoy all the people worldwide and uh, one point definitely what I would what I would also to underline about Rato is the unique philosophy in terms of behavior uh, finally when I'm, we are looking back in the archive and in all the the, the books we see that uh, the founder family they had in the very beginning already a slogan what you can believe, you can do it. And really, it's uh, definitely a great satisfaction to know that actually all the 250 people who are working in this factory uh, and here in Lengnau and all over the world by Rado in the different factories, by Comadur in short form, those all over the world, finally they are working with this philosophy. What I can imagine, can, I can do it. And with this, definitely, we have... Uh, uh, the great uh, security that we can transfer in joy and pleasure to the, our customers worldwide. And here uh, I show you two specific uh, point of sales. Uh, we have today with uh, Sumir and Hitten, two de designers from India with us, with which we will present the watch. And India is for Rado a uh, spe specific country because in India, Rado is not a strong brand, it's the brand. It's really the hero brand uh, because we have a so, such big presence in the trade. We have a such strong brand awareness and everybody who would like to buy a real Swiss watch brand with big values, long-term values, he's buying Rato. And therefore, you know, this collaboration with uh, Sumir and Hitten is uh, really very nice because our brand is present with such point of sale all over India. And to present today uh, two designers from a country in which we are so strong, it's for uh, all of us a great pleasure and a great satisfaction. Okay, so in this sense, I would like to give over the world to our uh, product manager, head of product, Hakim, and he will uh, present you a little bit of evolution in Square Watches in the Rado collection. Okay. So we are talking about uh, the True Square. True, True Square in 2020, it's a kind of uh, going back to the roots of Rado. So in uh, the 60s, 70s, so we worked on hard material and the only way was to manufacture square watches. And the idea this year was to come back to the true square. Um, because in um, the between, so we started also to manufacture round watches, we had more opportunities with the new tool, the new machines, the new materials, to work on the round watches. Today, the idea is really to go back to, to, to the roots of the brand and to bring a new shape, the shape that was in the past really square. You can see we had really square edges in the past and now we are going to something more round, more um, um, contemporary, more uh, something that uh, is really in line with the trends that are um, today. Um, we um, are working since few years on a product like uh, the True Square or the True or the True Sin line with different designers coming from every part of the world. And um, so this year, normally, we wanted to work with people where we had some events, like in India. So usually we are at the Indian Art Fair, uh, where uh, we already had uh, the pleasure to have uh, Sumir and Jiten also uh, be part of there. We uh, had also to be at um, Milano uh, Design Fuori. We had to be also in, uh, in Japan. We had to be also uh, in, uh, in different countries to have the Rado Star Prize and to have 
uh, also the presentation of the new watches. The idea is when we launch a product is to work with different designers coming from different fields, from different environments, from different countries. And the, the thing is, we are leaving them a white canva. So the white canva is the shape of the watch. The watch that we are launching uh, today, which is the, the, the true square, for instance, and here, so they can really play, they can really um, um, have their fingerprint into our world. So we are mixing the high technology and our um, material and our design with what they feel, what they think, and also what they can bring, and also the cultural thing they have, um, they can bring on the watch. Uh, so you have seen maybe Yoi bringing something that is really Japanese, really minimalistic. You have seen also Tej in his uh, words of the, I mean, the 70s, as I said yesterday. You can see also um, Forma Fantasma, uh, where is really conceptual. And here we are going to talk about uh, Jiten and Sumir working on the project, and they are living also somewhere, uh, which is totally different. With um, It's really a colorful world, something that is really a dream. Uh, but today, we are not going to show the product. We are going to tease it, uh, because the product will be launched only uh, in summer uh, 2001. And so we just wanted to tease, to show, and to then we, we have to, to, to ask Jiten and Sumir to talk about their own uh, product. Okay, thanks very much, Hakim. So let's go straight to Sumir and Jiten then. If you guys, if you'd like to share your screen and tell us all about your work and your collaboration. Sure, uh, thank you, Marcus, and thank you, Hakim, uh, for all the uh, build up. Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, we were quite uh, honored to kind of get the chance to design an object which is interestingly um, from one of the most valuable. I mean, we always talk about the time as as a river which is flowing constantly. Uh, so this presentation is is primarily a walk in the studio and then leading up to the design which we are actually uh, thought of, which should actually work for. This thing, this is our studio space. And uh, uh, if you see them, we've been, we've been trying to work on, on the political statement or on a larger uh, uh, at studio at large actually performs on the mediums which are actually going to a very basic human kind of uh, desire of flying. Now, this is something which is really large piece which is made in stone. Uh, and a person actually goes and stands in between for us, human interaction, touch is really important to the body of work. Even if it is uh, a tiny uh, scale, uh, we would like people to see through the nuances, through the symbols, and it's also allow them to actually go and build up some kind of a hope, which we both constantly build up on. So it's like, it's like you know, when we actually create a work of art, it is uh, a portrait in third person. Uh, so you can actually see what goes on in our heads and uh, this is literally some images of the studio, how the studio works with the very large works. While we're actually making the large works, we both are quite involved in the process, which actually goes in for months to build up one large piece. Uh, Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. And, and something which is really interesting for both of us is the time invested and the, and the and the community which we landed up building within doing these exercises. This is something which we actually did in the pandemic, which was the meltdown of something. Everything is melting down in terms of the emotions, in terms of the structure, how we've actually been li living. And this is something which we've been thinking a lot in terms of a work which was more making sense of this particular time. Uh, as we've always been talking about the that the time owns the idea rather than, I mean, there was a, there was a very friendly, interesting interview talking about who owns the idea when you both work. And we started talking about that the time will own the idea because we will just, uh, just mere tools to deliver this. Uh, this is something very close to our heart, which is a ceramic, which is a porcelain. Uh, and the usage of color was something which we wanted to bring, which we, got really excited when Hakim showed us all the kind of uh, varieties and the, the kind of material which was coming out. And the first thing uh, 
uh, the very first decision came out to be extracting colors from our vocabulary. And we started building upon those areas where uh, the imagery and the watches and the front and the back, which is very interesting, which can be also seen as two people working together uh, and something which is more intimate within your skin and rather one more, uh, uh, you know, extrovert, which is up like two arms and something which actually came out very instinctively that uh, talking about many different time zones at the same time not just looking into this, like today we are talking, uh, you're actually thinking about London, you're thinking about Switzerland, and you're thinking about US at the same time, while we are constantly working. So there is a very interesting thing about the Cosmo local, which we wanted to bring in. And uh, this is something which is interesting that all the colors actually open up to create patterns and different arms. Each arm can be one of your thought, and it can actually move into a, into a, into a pattern, which is an animation pattern, moving by every time, every minute. And something which is uh, unique to, uh, to the process is like wearing an artwork on your hand. Uh, and the backside is something which you only know that you are wearing. Thinking about Earth has a spaceship and has limited resources. So thinking from the time capsule, this is what we wanted to bring in. Thank you very much. So, so tell me a little bit more about the, the images that you've designed for the, the face and the back of the watch that you talked about it being a, a spaceship of Earth or whatever, but are these new images you've created for the watch and what story do they tell? So we've been, you want to say something? So some of them were from our new images and some of them are old images because uh, color tones are already, which we were using in most of our works, as you can see behind us also, the one painting. So we like to go with the color palette which we're already using. We are more comfortable in that, but uh, it was a challenge for us to use in different, so many hands and so many colors we want to show. So that's why we use a painting at the back, not in the front. So it's also keeping the uh, the colors uh, to a point that they actually change with the grid. So uh, the ones which is behind, which is the R uh, spring, uh, the star which has the arm uh, of the hour is more mellowed down. It's more darker, uh, keeping it like a pattern which actually overall uh, emerges. And that's something really excited because we, when we are actually working, we are working with the team, we are working with a larger concern. So the individual seeing time can be actually extended to an experience of seeing uh, time with the community. And that's what we actually thought. And uh, thinking from that perspective, like uh, the moment we actually shared it with Hakim and uh, Verdon, that was really interestingly received because they understood what we were trying to do. Uh, and we didn't really have to uh, bring in any second uh, idea to in front of it. Uh, we called it over the abyss, which is basically flowing up uh, into a void and just keeping on the edge of a hope. And how technically, how are these images applied to their watch? Are, are, they, are they printed images or hand painted and how, what material are they made of and how are they um, integrated into the watch? So the behind painting is uh, behind the, the, watch, the image you see, that's actually a painting of ours. First we painted it, then we uh, transferred it to the, the digital format that's printed later on. So, uh, uh, and it is, uh, so that both of them uh, are digitally printed, uh, very fine uh, laser. Probably Hakim would like to expand on that. Uh, in fact, on the case back of the watch, we have uh, sapphire crystal. And um, so we have uh, kind of nice machineries today, which are really accurate. And we can do uh, digital printing on the, the case back. Um, then after that, this is set. Uh, the design is reversed and set. Uh, so in order to not have the painting touching the skin, but only the sapphire crystal, which is on the back of the watch. Uh, I think uh, the way of having the design also on the, the, the back case is something really interesting because usually you show the watch 
from the top. And everybody can see the watch from the top. But I think uh, if you have a design on the back, if you have something that is different on the back, it's kind of um, your secret garden. So you are going to have it. You are going to keep it. And if you want to share with someone, so you are going to remove the watch and to show to the one that you want to show, so the, the, the product. I think that is really nice because it's really the fingerprint, the, the environment of the designer, which is hidden on the back of the watch. Just a, a random question, but did anyone ever develop a, a reversible watch that you can wear both ways? Is that ever? Um, there are some brands doing that, <laughs> but we are not doing this. But you know, on the other side, uh, we are very strong with mechanical watches, and also the through square. It's a mechanical watch, and of course, when you have a mechanical watches, you are used. Of course, to see the, the front face of the watch, but also several times to look the back and to see all the wheels and also the oscillant, the oscillant weight and all the very nice finishing of, uh, of the movement. And in uh, the design watch of uh, Sumir and Eaton, you see this unique design. It's also a part, you know, it's uh, a secret for you or for uh, your personal environment, environment in which uh, you would like to share. And therefore, it's a very good place also to create a specific design on the back case uh, of the watch. Because of the, of, of course, the front, you would like to see the hands and the timing. And this is also the point. Um, of course, we have a lot of hands, but Hakimi promised me you can read the time. <laughs> well, that, right, was, huh? that was going to be my next question to Samir and Jutan. So you have. These, I mean, it look, it's beautiful. It looks like a firework exploding. But what is the thinking behind having so many hands? And how can people read the watch? So a very simple thought which came out is that nothing happens in an isolation. Uh, that we are a com larger community, larger system. Thinking about our own self can be really self-obsessed. And if you really actually open up the entire understanding of this, this can actually opens up to that you build a community or, uh, or anything which is uh, functional and you, you step out of it and keep that thing as self uh, revolving exercise. Something which is that uh, simply put to be put together is that thinking about different time zones, but the, at large, the understanding can actually move into a space where you're not just thinking about your own uh, private self, but rather thinking about a large community. Community can be countries, community can be friends, community can be larger people living. So I, I understand that the idea of all the hands is that it does tell the time in different time zones, but how would you know which is your time zone? How would, are, there, are there little secret codes or a little marker that allows you to figure out the time in your zone? Yes, there are two signifiers on the arm and on the uh, hour minutes and the hours. Uh, you can actually see it very uh, clearly. Uh, and that's something which we have kept very uh, interestingly, the paramount thing that to read the time on an accuracy is our, uh, the, the first exercise was, so, yeah. And when you were designing this watch, were you, who did you have in mind as a potential customer of this watch? Is it for people who uh, into you as designers and, and follow your careers and your work? Or is it something that you think would appeal to like an average person shopping in, in, in New Delhi in the, in the shopping district, who do you imagine would want to, to buy this particular watch? Well, I think uh, the, the idea of time is uh, very in interesting in terms of when you bring an experience to it. I think people who are, who are looking, who have a keen eye and looking for an experience, I think it is one of its kind uh, watch that will never be repeated. And that's something, the entire point of doing a collaboration with an artistic uh, agency is to reach out to a point where uh, uh, the object becomes uh, premium and in terms of craft or in terms of thought process. So yeah, so a lot of people who have a keen eye who've been our uh, patrons at the same time, but also younger people who are uh, keen on these things. And Adrian and Hakim, you mentioned that India is a huge market for Rada. Is it the biggest or is it top five? How does it sort of rank in terms of... Um... It's one of the top three markets. First of all, of course, you have a huge quantity of population. But on the other side, of course, also, we have a tremendous brand awareness uh, in India. 
And also, therefore, uh, you know, Sumir and Hitten, they are very famous and popular designer in India. That will mean they will have uh, fans who appreciate their work. They are inspired from uh, also their artwork. And we are convinced that we can enjoy a lot of uh, people also in India with uh, their work. But on the other side, they are also known in other countries. And especially also, you have always customers who search, you know, unique pieces in terms of uh, design, unique pieces also in terms of inspiration and in cre uh, and cre creation, something uh, which you don't see on any wrists. And this is definitely also one of our strengths and also one of the reasons that we are working with creative people like uh, Hitin and Sumir. Actually, India is the third biggest audience for design as well. Number one is US, number two is UK and India. So we have a huge audience in India. Um, and with your watches, do you find that people in different countries choose different types of watches or different colors? Is there a, do people buy the same watch all around the world or are there different trends in different regions? Of course, we have different trends, but with the globalization, you know, today everybody everybody's connected worldwide. We see that more and more you have, you know, several in international codes who are applied. But you have uh, still uh, counties in which they prefer more, uh, for instance, uh, golden uh, pieces, uh, some areas more uh, smaller watch, speaker watch, mechanical watch, quartz. but you see some differences. But compared with uh, 15 or 20 years ago, on which you have big differences, you have more and more also some uh, key products who are appreciated on a worldwide scale. And you've worked with four different design studios in four different parts of the world. You've got Yoi in Tokyo, former Phantasma, they're Italian, but they're based in Amsterdam, Tej Chauhan in London, and... Um, Tukral and Tagra in New Delhi. Was that a deliberate choice of different territories in order to find um, uh, design ideas that represented those cultures or was it just the four best people you could find anywhere in the world and the location didn't matter? So they are the four best, of course. Uh, but the, the thing is really because um, we, we had already the same program uh, two years ago and last year. And so we choose different countries. Now the, the selection of the country is because we had also some events and we had also the Rado Star Press where we wanted also to, um, to show the brand, to show also the different uh, person working on the design, the designers, and also to have the, the link between the designer and also the young designer because we have a program for young designer normally, which is the Rado Star Press. And uh, so uh, normally it's a um, kind of combination to work with the designer, and then they are also part of the Radio Star Prize to be the ju jury uh, of uh, this, uh, this event. And um, also, um, the four countries are really four strong countries for, uh, for Radio. That is uh, the reason why the end. On the other side, it's also important. We are uh, contacted, let's say, every second week from designers who would like to work with us. And in the end, uh, we, we must do some choices because it makes no sense, you know, to overload. Uh, we prefer to have uh, less collaborations, but uh, collaborations with people who understand our philosophy. And therefore, it's always also important that, you know, uh, that how can we meet uh, the, the designers or as it was the case also for you, uh, Christian Verdon, who is also was strongly involved in the project, that we feel that uh, our creative people and the creative people uh, from the design studios, they, they match together. They are also talking, you know, with the same language. Uh, also, they, they can inspire each other. And based on this, after uh, the decision is taken. Mir and Jitsen, is this the first time you've worked on a watch? And um, what, were the, what were the most difficult challenges or the most exciting challenges of working on something of that scale? Yes, it is indeed the first time uh, of working on a time uh, object. Uh, I think the most interesting thing for us was that we had too many ideas to begin with <laughs> to, to boil down to see the practicality of it. I think that's something which is really interesting uh, with also learning something like a nano, uh, you know, like the entire manufacturing uh, with Hakim was like quite interesting that to think that the depth of thought which has gone into making an object. 
we came up with lots of ideas but i think this is something which we all believe that it is to be realistic in time uh yeah and, and then people wearing it so closely intimately something which we uh, make so that's something really exciting as well and hakim adrian just mentioned about um lots of people getting in touch with rado designers getting in touch wanting to to work with rado and design watches but what is there a particular skill you need to be a watch designer is is it in what way do you need to approach watch design in a different way to any other kind of industrial design or crafted object what, okay. what if you're if, what are you looking for in a designer if you're interviewing people to join your team okay usually um working with watch designers so is something which is really specific because we are working really in the small uh, dimension and you have to also to understand how to build the watch how to to integrate all the elements in the watch it's really uh, a job uh, by its own so uh normally uh, people that are not working in the watch industry so the designer who, who are not working in the watch industry they don't see that because usually they are building uh, furnitures or like you have seen before I mean the big wings uh, that the Tukal Integral did it's fantastic it's huge but they are not working in the microscopic uh, scale which is the one tenth one one hundredth uh, of millimeter so and then, so we have codes also uh, doing watches. So you have codes, you have elements because it's something that you have to have on, on the skin. It must be readable, easy, perfect. But here working with all the designers coming from all the, the different fields, they're bringing us something new, some a new eye on looking at the watch, a new eye on looking at uh, uh, at the time and also using new materials, using new uh, new things. Uh, for instance, uh, to Karen Tagal, they, they came with, with many, many ideas. They came with uh, marble from the Taj Mahal. They came with different type of colors. So uh, we had at the end a lot of uh, uh, things to, to do. We had to grab also. Uh, we had to, uh, they sent us a piece of the, 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 the um, uh, we say the gravery, the, 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 um, and the curry, the curry, uh, the curry from uh, the Taj Mahal stone. And uh, so we had, and we tried also to cut and to slice also this uh, material to see what I mean, that was feasible, but uh, we, I mean, it was breakable. So that is not something that we could have on the, the skin. So we have to test new materials. We have to test different things. And at the end, so we can't achieve everything. We try to do it, so that's our challenge, but it's not always feasible um, when working with designers that are not in the watch industry. In conclusion, Marcus, finally, uh, uh, a designer without the competence of our designer and our uh, engineers, it would be impossible to create uh, a watch who is functionally afterwards. On the other side, without the inputs of creative designer, probably we will not find any other uh, creative ideas in terms of design. So therefore, this collaboration is fruitful in the end for uh, the, the watch lovers to buy something which is functional, which is high quality, and which is also unique in terms of design. And this is also another point in the watch industry, the big responsibility of a design, because a watch you are often, it's not an object which is obsolete after two, three years. A watch is with you often the whole life or even a second generation, and especially a auto watch, which is, you know, you was know, scratch proofed and it's, it's, it's looking like new, even after 10, 20, 30 years. And this is also one of a uh, reason that the Indian people who are very emotional people, very warm people, people who also would like to invest money, but for something which is durable and is also uh, timeless. And uh, therefore also the, a watch designer have a big responsibility because to make a design which is obsolete after two years, this is uh, not appropriate. It must be a design which is unique, but of course also interesting after uh, 10, 20 or 30 years. And final question, Hakim, as a, as a designer at Rado, do you and your team, do you also work with the mechanism or is the mechanism designed by special people um, that are dedicated to generating the kind of technical sides of watches? And, and, and if, you, if you work with them, are you able to say, can we have that wheel a bit more over there? How, how involved in the mechanism does your team 
get. Okay. So uh, normally uh, we are working with ETA Movement. So it's a system company um, in the Swatch Group. And uh, so we have this type of movement. So they are given, but of course, every brand has the ability to change, to modify things, to add some elements, uh, and we can really uh, have our own movement. So we are also involved in giving uh, to the manufacturer um, our ID about the movement, if we want to change things, or uh, that can be the color, that can be a wheel, that can be uh, to add a model, or that can be to, to change the height for the hands or things like this, we are able. So we have also to work on that uh, in order to finalize the product, of course. Okay, well, thank you all so much. It's been a wonderful journey working with Rado this week. It's been great to speak to the creatives all around the world and see their collaborations with you. So thanks so much, Adrian and Hakim in Switzerland. Great to meet you, Samir and Jitan in India. And thank you very much for working with us on Rado Design Week. It's been a great pleasure and good luck with the launch of all of the watches. Thank you. Bye. Thank you and bye-bye to everybody from uh, Delhi, from UK, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh. Bye-bye.